Hello. I uh, first met our guest today at the Radnor Citizens Police Organization. Uh, Chris Bozzi is the co-owner of Anytime Fitness in Villanova, right up the street from Starbucks. So after you go to the gym, you go to Starbucks. Chris, I got enthusiastic about a gym and after I met you and we were through the police organization. Uh, how did you get, were you always a, a gym guy or? Uh, I was not always a gym guy. I was an athlete when I was in high school and uh, got away from athletic stuff when I was in college and through my 20s. And when I uh, hit about 30, um, a buddy of mine was working out a lot and said, hey, why don't you come to the gym with me? And I said, all right, I guess I'll go back to getting into a little bit of the fitness area. And I started up in my early 30s. And I wasn't really a gym guy at that time, so I was just kind of following the lead of a friend of mine. You were always an adventurer. Yes. I uh, love to do things outside. Um, I love to adventure travel. When I travel, I like to travel around the world. I'm always incorporating some type of activity, uh, some type of difference than sitting on a beach and relaxing. Uh, I have to move. I have to you know, be doing something. So um, right around the same time I began getting back into exercise in my early 30s, a buddy of mine was doing some mountaineering, mountain climbing, and asked me to climb uh, Mount Rainier in Washington with him. And I balked at that. I said, there's no way I can do that. And he kind of talked me into like, hey, we're going to train together, and I think you can do it. And so I said, yeah, I'll try it. And I, I started working out more in the gym, and uh, I ended up climbing Mount Rainier, um, which was the first time I ever did something like that in my life. And uh, it was life-changing, absolutely life-changing. So, how, how was it life-changing? Life-changing is it, it, it introduced me into uh, my, you know, where my physical limitations are or, or where they could be. Um, you know, as humans, we don't give ourselves enough credit on what our bodies can actually do. Um, and it gave me a little bit of motivation that I wanted to almost get back in shape as quickly as I could because I'd been away from it for so long. And it, it taught me how to be goal oriented, you know, and not just physically, but many things in life. So, you know, it's kind of representative of, you know, struggles. How long did it take you to train to, to climb a mountain? It took me for Mount Rainier about, I'd say four, five, three or four months of serious training, you know. So I had not, you know, I had been training for about a year or so or two years, just, you know, not, not, so, not so tough. And then when I decided I was going to commit to Mount Rainier and I read up on it and I researched it, uh, I was like, wow, I got a lot of work to do. So I really, you know, spent three or four months seriously okay. training. And just tell me what kind of training you had to do. So I did a lot of cross training. I did a lot of um, strength training, conditioning, um, endurance. Um, I would, you know, hike, uh, put a backpack on. Um, I would do maybe two workouts a day some, during the week. Uh, I would um, walk and, and for hours. Um, you know, I walked from Wayne to Philadelphia. Um, because you need to build up your endurance uh, when, you're, when you're climbing and hiking. But I also did a lot of strength training, conditioning, and stuff like that. Did, did you uh, climb any other mountains? I did. So that really kind of put me into gear. After I got off that mountain, while I was on that mountain, I was like, what am I doing here? I ended up getting to the top. And when I came back down, I was like, wow, what's next? And so I started to plan these climbing trips yearly with my buddy and uh, we did several mountains uh, we did um, we climbed a few more out in Washington and then we climbed uh, Aconcagua down in South America we climbed uh, Elbrus in Russia uh, we climbed Kilimanjaro in Tanzania uh, climbed Mont Blanc in France um, um, among other ones so did you climb Machu Picchu I did Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is more of a trek than a climb. Uh, these climbs were more mountaineering where you're roped in and, you know, you have crampons on and ice axes and stuff. So you're 
exposed to the elements and you're on the mountain, some of the mountains for, you know, a week or two. Um, so you're bad on a lot of different, you know. I, uh, I had one experience and I didn't climb it, but I was in France and uh, I, I wrote, took the uh, uh, cable car mm -hmm. in Mont Blanc. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Chamonix mm -hmm. to Mont Blanc. And when I got to the top of the, the mountain, it took about 10 minutes to get up the mountain from the cable car. I was physically exhausted. I had to lie down on a platform. So whatever you had to do to climb those mountains, it certainly is exhausting. It's the altitude, absolutely. Uh, so in altitude, our bodies don't function as they do down here on sea level. So that was another challenge I had. And as the mountains got harder for me, um, I incorporated other things because we were going up higher and higher into altitude on these larger mountains. So that's probably why you're so difficult as a trainer, because you figure that if uh, you can endure it, <laughs> those that you train uh, I, can get can, should be able to endure it. I like to push people to the next level. We actually like to use the term coach as opposed to trainer, um, especially at any time fitness. But um, I like to expose people to. Um, an area that they've never seen to be out of their comfort zone. And, you know, people that come into the gym and work out, you know, religiously, you know, you get to a point where you kind of plateau. You just may be doing the same things all the time. And as you know, I like to push because there's a lot of room between where you are and where you can be, you know. So, and I've been there. I was the, I was the one that was, you know, in the beginning, wasn't sure, and so I had somebody pushing me. Well, you you are my trainer, so it's part of the the reason that I asked you to come on the, the show. And um, what what is what is the you know, people make you know New Year's resolutions and they join gyms and what what keeps them there? So New Year's. New Year's resolutions are tough because they tend to die out, obviously, with everything we, you know, commit to in the beginning of the year. Um, with people committing and sticking with something, it's got to be interesting. It's got to be something they like to do, you know, and obviously fitness is huge. And, you know, January 1st, January 2nd, the gym's packed. And within two or three months, those people aren't showing up as much. So... The key is to make it interesting for them. And if you're on your own, it, it can be difficult to motivate yourself. So it's really great to have somebody like a cheerleader, a hand holder, you know, a coach helping you through the, through the beginning to get you started and push you through the tough times when it gets a little, mm, I don't know if I want to be here today. I don't want to, I don't want to show up. So, you know, accountability. I, I personally, and you could, you can, you probably tell me, you'll, you'll probably agree with me. I don't believe that you can really do do the work without a coach. Uh, I think that you need to have someone consistently pushing you along. You agree with that? I do agree with that, and it depends. Everybody's different. There's people that can come into the gym and do their own thing, and they're self motivated. And and I think that's a small group of people. Uh, I think a majority of the population is either needs help, you know, getting started and staying, you know, on the on the right track. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's always great to have a coach no matter what you're doing, you know? So um, that, I think, is the number one thing. Would, would, and, and this isn't an advertisement. Is, would you say that uh, Anytime Fitness is like a boutique gym? Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely is. It's a small, unique, boutique-y kind of place. Uh, there's, a, you know, there's gyms like there's restaurants. They're all over the place. So, you know, certain places you're going to find more appealing. Um, and in and, and Anytime Fitness, we have we're trying to develop a culture there, a uh, friendly family environment where we encourage each other. And it could be if you're 20 years old or you're 80 years old. So it doesn't matter. It's never too late to start. And, you know, we want to build that kind of culture there. And it's a small gym. It's not that crowded. It's 24-7 access. So... You know, it's open all the time. So there's always different waves of people coming in and out. How does going to a gym, a gym, mm -hmm. affect your well-being? Oh, where do I start with that one? It is huge. Uh, any type of physical exercise 
is scientifically proven that it, it, it affects your mental state 100%. And we all want to look good. We always want, we all want to feel good. Um, and exercise is, and nutrition, obviously, and rest. Those are the three most important things um, when it comes to your physical being. Um, and it affects your mental being, you know. So to get to the gym, to exercise consistently, and that doesn't mean you have to go to the gym five or seven times a week and have these tough workouts. It's just in, incorporating into a lifestyle for you where, you know, you breathe, you sleep, you eat. Exercise should be right in there too. So, you know, it's very important for your well being. Again, if you're young, it's great to get started in that mindset and incorporate that in your life until, until for as long as you're here, you know, so. You mentioned something to me about uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. Did you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. COVID obviously was, uh, you know, a huge uh, ordeal for the world. Um, it affected a lot of businesses and it really affected fitness industry and the gym business, um, you know, Obviously, the, the intimate way people are in, in a confined space and sweat and, you know. So the COVID really turned the industry upside down. A lot of people now are still doing what they did during COVID where they're working out at home. Um, they, they have fitted out their basements for gyms and equipment and all this stuff. And there's certain people that say, we're never going back to the gym. We have a beautiful facility in our house and it's convenient. But there's a lot of people that, um, you know, look forward to going to the gym, look forward to, to being around other people and to, and to be um, pushing themselves or being motivated. So it, on the COVID side, we have a great facility. It's super clean and people are filtering back, um, you know, slowly, even, you know, before the New Year's resolutions. And I think it's going to be a different time for gyms in general moving forward. But uh, it's, a, it's a great place to, to get going, to start, you know, incorporating that into your life. What, what mistakes do people make when joining a gym? So, you know, I think sometimes people join a gym and just say, I joined a gym and I'm going to get in shape. <laughs> so they join the gym and they don't do the work. All right. So basically they, you know, see that they have their gym membership um, as a way to always say, I can always go to the gym. It's just the consistency of using the gym, you know. And as you know, I text you if I don't see you. I'm like, hey, where are you? What are you doing? Um, so it's, you know, we all have lots of things going on in our life. So there's times when we're going to have a busy week, you know, but if, if it rolls into a week or two or three, you know, it's, it's the consistency and making it part of your lifestyle and incorporating that, making it, making your gym visit like a business meeting. You put that in your calendar and you make time for yourself. So, um, the trouble is people sometimes think they're joining a gym and it's having to buy a car and leaving it in the garage. Should you go to a doctor first before you join a gym? Depends. I mean, if you, I think it's probably beneficial. We should all be getting physicals. So if it's, you know, if you've never worked out before, I, I, I suggest that you go and get checked out and make sure you don't have any underlying health issues. Um, you know, if you've been working out and you're, you know, on the younger side, maybe, you know, you can show up to the gym. Um, you know, sometimes we have doctors uh, or a members that have doctor's orders to say, you have to start working out. So they'll show up and say, all right, my doctor said, I got to start working out. So we have built a nice staff at our facility with um, physical therapists and uh, recovery specialists and, you know, functional trainers and people that have worked post surgeries. And so it all depends on the individual. How does that exercise, when you say affects your your well-being there's there's some research being done about post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. uh and and uh, emotional stress mm -hmm. is, is, do you find that to be true 100 percent. your your body and your mind are so connected um i just went through 
uh, back surgery last year. So I understand uh, more so now than I did before about how how physical and how mentally you can be connected. Um, so the, the exercise isn't just rehabilitation for an injury. Um, you know, exercise is rehabilitation for your for your mind also. Um, and again, that's all linked in with you know nutrition, rest, uh, physical activity, and and mental health is now on the forefront of of topics now and it's huge. I mean, people kind of ignore it and uh, think it's just such a, a big uh, component to live in happy, you know? People say that, uh, some people said that the hardest part about a gym is going to it. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard that. Yeah. Why, why do people quit? Quit because they, they get bored, or they get frustrated, or they say this isn't this isn't worth it. Uh, quick fix, we, you know, you turn on the TV, you have a quick fix. You have pills and you have equipment that you can buy. It's it's duration. It's you know it's building a foundation. You know, like a house, building a good foundation, framing the house out, drywalling the house. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So people can get into a fitness routine and fizzle out pretty quick. It's, it's tough, it's hard work. It's not, it's not always easy, but again, you make small steps and you just keep taking small steps. And that's what I learned by climbing the mountains is you know, it's one little step at a time and you eventually get to the top. And there's no finish line in, fi there's no finish line in fitness. Um, there's no finish line um, for that. But you strive to it, you know. You strive for it. How young can a person be to go into a gym? I think they can be as young as they. They can be any age. I mean, you you go to you know daycares and the kids are active and doing stuff. So a big a gym like we have, you know, probably not until they're a teenager, you know, with the growth and development of a child or an adolescent. Um, and but it's important human we're humans we need to be moving should parents introduce their children to uh, to uh, gym at, at a young age again not too young i don't think too young i think it depends on uh one the individual also i think they need to develop a um a rapport with the child that it it's important to move and in this day and age with you know the internet and electronics, I see less and less kids. The athletic ones, yeah, they're playing sports, but there's a lot of kids that aren't moving and, and breaking a sweat and, you know, doing stuff. Well, that's what I was kind of getting at. Yeah, you know, so. Too, too many kids are sedentary. So many, and, and so they're, many. They're, they're just stuck in front of a, a laptop or a PC. Exactly. And, yeah. And you have, the, you have the athletic kids. You have the high school, we have a lot of athletic um, athlete, uh kids, high school kids in our gym, um, and they come in and, and they work out with either a coach or a trainer and, or they come in and do their own thing and they're, they're self-motivated and their, their goals are sports related, but the sedentary kids are either not given the tools, uh, motivation, you know, the guidance, you know. Do you think it's safe for pregnant women to work out? Yes, absolutely. They, uh, I know people that have, um, basically worked out up until, you know, the same day they, they deliver, so. They do. And, absolutely, and absolutely. And again, individuals, uh, you know, depending on the health of the, the individual, uh, as long as they get clearance from a doctor, um, and then they'll get clearance from a doctor, you know, after, after birth, when they can return. I, m I mentioned a coach, but I didn't, I didn't reference the role of mm -hmm. a coach. Yeah. So what is the role of a coach? Okay, so the role of a coach is to, um, if there's somebody that wants to get started in a fitness program, and maybe they're, they're not sure and they don't know where to even begin, they could join the gym and just show up and they look at all the equipment and they'll say, oh, what do I do? So a coach will introduce them to the gym, the equipment, what they can do, 
um, you know, go through a fitness consultation with them, see where they are, and they basically will introduce them. Or if they decide to continue with the coach, they will keep them motivated and push them through a program that's geared for them. Each individual has different needs. So a coach will, you know, be able to uh, set a program geared for that person. So in other words, when I walk into the gym and you take a look at me and you say to yourself, this guy's really a wreck. <laughs> Do you know immediately where to start without, without hurting my feelings and make me I, run out the door? I never look at you and say, you're a wreck. <laughs> I'll maybe wait till you start working out and then I'll make my assessment. <laughs> no, but um, no, we, no, absolutely not. I mean, I believe everybody is on a different fitness level. And our goal as a coach is to get you to the next fitness level. Whether you're on the first rung, you're trying to get to the second rung, or you're on the eighth rung, you're trying to get to the ninth rung. So, and our goal is to make it comfortable, make it fun um, for you without obviously deterring you from coming back. We want you to come back. <laughs> How about- um, We're gonna be super nice to you. Well, people people look at the expense of a gym. Does it vary? And, and I'm, I'm not talking about yours, yeah, but yeah. just in general. Is, are, there, are, there, are there various uh, medical coverages for it? Uh, do, do certain plans cover? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of different medical plans that cover it. Uh, and I can't even name all of them. There's there's several plans uh, depending on your uh, employer, depending on what you have. Um, and also, yeah, and the, and the expenses of the gyms uh, in the area are all, all very, very much, you know, so. I know the answers to some of these because I've worked with you, but mm -hmm. I think it's important for anyone watching <clears throat> And eventually you'll put this up on your website mm -hmm. for people to look. You are on social media, right? Yes, we are. So all, Anytime Fitness Villanova, yeah. Yes. So and you're and you're uh, you're you're on Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook. We're on all that. We're on Twitter. All social, yes. so, okay. So do you interview someone? How do you tell someone what they need? Is, is there an yeah. interview process? So the fitness consultation is what we do. If somebody comes in, we always offer every new member to the gym a fitness consultation, and we go through a series of, of, of tests of, of, and see where they are um, and see what their abilities are and their capabilities are. And then we'll run them through a little you know, workout while they're there just to show them what we can do with them to help them. And, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll feel the need that, you know, they need help getting to the next level. And sometimes it could be a short term or it could be a long term. You know, we have people that have had the same coach for years and we have somebody that wants to just do something like maybe climb a mountain and work out intensely for a few months you know, and then do their own thing again. So it, it all varies on the individual. I, I, and I know you know the answer to these questions. What's the value of, of, a, of stretching? I mean, I know the answer to that question. What's the value of stretching? Oh, so mobility, flexibility is huge. It's, uh, you know, preventing injuries as we get older. Um, I'm a big yoga person. So I incorporate yoga into my weekly routines. And it is so important, especially at, at our ages, um, and even when you're younger, to get to get used to that, uh, it very much helps, um, you know, defer some pain and some injuries as you your body wear and tear. You know, it's you, you beat your body up. No matter no matter what you're doing, as you get older, you beat your body up. So uh, to stretch um, is 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 a big important factor in that preventative, um, you know, injury. Um, also, it's also my, it's, it's, it's good for your mind too. It's very good for your mind. Do, do you recommend yoga? To I your... do. I recommend yoga and it doesn't matter any type of yoga. Um, I recommend mixing that in with anything you're doing physically. Uh, it's big in the sports industry now. A lot of sports teams are doing it. A lot of, uh, ath athletes individually do it on their own, uh, professional athletes and, you know, it's a, it's a great addition to your, to your program. 
Anything you want to add? Specifically, those are all programs that we are developing right now at our at our facility in Villanova. So, you know, we, we have these classes that we're offering that are like 101 fitness for people, again, that aren't sure how to work out or not familiar with the gym. So we're going to be doing those, those programs. Uh, we have some recovery um, programs that we're working on also. Um, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like a salad, so to speak. You know, you can eat one vegetable. That's great. But you need to have a lot of different vegetables in your salad to be healthy. And, you know, we offer that stuff with great coaches down there um, and a lot of good guidance. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. I, I, I appreciate the time. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. Uh, but I would like to say that Chris is an adventurer and um, we've taken the time today to dedicate this interview to a, a, a great Radnor resident who I never met, but I know his family. And he was a, uh, an adventurer as well, and that's Parker Shuri. And I wish uh, he and his family uh, strength and uh, peace. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure for you to be here. I'll see you in the to, gym uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so all you have to do is give me a time. Good. Perfect. And I'll, I'll be there. I'll see you later. <laughs> uh, this is John Ricciuti from MainlineTV.org. Thank you for the time. And I hope you enjoyed the show and found it educational and informative. Thank you.